oceans cover over 70% of the Earth's surface, and they play a vital role in regulating the Earth's climate and weather patterns. But melting ice caps are affecting our oceans, and in turn, it's affecting our climate. Hello and welcome to Ocean Science in Your Kitchen. In this short series, we're going to be using some simple experiments to investigate how changing ocean currents are affecting our climate. Now, water in the oceans moves in patterns that we call currents. Winds drive the ocean currents in the upper 100 metres of the ocean surface. However, ocean currents also flow thousands of metres below the surface. These deep ocean currents are driven by differences in the water's density, which is controlled by temperature, thermo, and salinity, haline. So this process is known as thermohaline circulation. Salinity is the saltiness, or the amount of salt dissolved in a body of water. My name's Dara, and in this video we'll be investigating salinity, temperature, and the sea. Now today's experiment builds on concepts that were covered in videos 1 and 2 of Ocean Science in Your Kitchen. So if you haven't seen them yet, pause this video and come back when you have. Alright, are we ready? Let's explore ocean currents a bit further. Now here we have two glasses of water at room temperature. Glass A is just tap water and in glass B I'm going to dissolve some salt into the tap water so that it contains salty water. In part one of Ocean Science in Your Kitchen, you'll have seen that salt increases the density of water. And what we mean by density is how much material is packed into a certain amount of space. The particles in the liquid water aren't fixed like a solid. There are some spaces between them, and the salt sort of fills in those spaces when it's added. The particles in salty water are therefore more tightly packed than the particles in our tap water. So our glass B full of salty water is more dense than the tap water in our glass A. Now here are some ice cubes I prepared last night. I added food colouring to the water before freezing it. If you want to try this at home, you want to make sure that you've got nice dark coloured ice cubes. Blue or black colouring is best. I added one part food colouring and three parts water. You might want to get an adult to help with that bit. Okay, so I've got two glasses of warm water and one of them here, glass B, is salty water. Into each glass I'm going to place a coloured ice cube which represents cold water. I've coloured the ice so that we can see how the cold water from the ice mixes with the warm water in each glass. Ready? Watch carefully. What do you expect will happen? Glass A was filled with warm water. When the ice was added, initially the cold coloured water began to sink. Why do you think the cold water sank? Well, cold water is more dense than warm water, so it will sink. But then that cold water mixes with the warm water in the glass and it begins to warm up. It becomes less dense and so it starts to rise again. This is called a convection current and it happens in our oceans. At the poles, the cold ocean water sinks moving deep below the ocean's surface, towards the equator where it's warmer. And when the cold water is warmed, it will start to rise, and then it will move to replace the sinking cold water near the poles. But our oceans are salty, and what we see in glass B, which was full of salty water, is that the cold coloured water stays near the top. It doesn't sink as much, apart from the few odd bits that we can see. We know that cold water is more dense, and it should sink in the warm water, but it doesn't. Why do you think this happened? Well, the only difference between the two glasses is that glass B had salt in the water and glass A didn't. This tells us that cold water, which is more dense, can sit on top of warm water if the warm water has a high enough salinity or a high enough amount of salt in it. So what does this mean for our oceans and our climate? Well, rising global temperatures are melting our polar ice caps, and as a result, more fresh water is being added to those cold polar ocean waters. And by adding more fresh water, you reduce its salinity, the amount of salt it has in it. Now, we know that the less salt the water has, the less dense it is, and that means it won't sink as quickly. As a result, this whole process of water circulation in our oceans, this thermohaline circulation, actually slows down. Because this cold water won't sink as quickly, it can actually cool the air above it, and if blown by wind, it can bring colder temperatures over land. 
because this cold water won't sink as quickly, we can actually end up having colder winters and the opposite in summer, warmer summers. So melting ice caps are affecting our oceans and in turn it's affecting our climate. And there you have it, the relationship between salinity, temperature and the sea. Now, why don't you try this experiment for yourself at home? And if you do, we'd love to see it, so send us a snap. Tweet us at ROG Astronomers, and don't forget to use the hashtag Ocean Science. That's it from Ocean Science in your kitchen. Thanks for joining.